Hello viewers and welcome back to Let's Play Ultima 1, the first Age of Darkness. We are going to continue from where we left off. We have just landed back on the planet after becoming a space ace. Um, we are now going to venture to a castle in order to rescue a princess who will hopefully be able to help us work a time machine. Because this game is completely crazy, apparently. Uh, okay, so we are going to go into the castle of the Lost King. We have our reflect suit ready. We have our blaster. Everything's really fine. So at this point, our stats, our stats are very high. We've got pretty high agility, stamina, wisdom, strength. Everything's fine. We should be able to deal with the guards in here because what is going to happen, basically, in order to break the, the princess out of prison, you may have heard how the jester declaring that he has the key, as he has done just there. Gueno, the jester, sings, I've got the key. Well, thank you for, for letting us know. You are now going to die. We have now found a key. Unfortunately, we have not made friends with the guards of the castle in doing so. So we are going to have to kill the guards to get through here. Fortunately, at this point in the game, we should be just about strong enough to deal with the guards. Now, hopefully... Ah, this time it is not the correct key that we have been given. This is one of the dangers. Normally, when you take the key from the jester, it will be the correct key for the lock that the princess is in. In this case, it is not. We're going to... Leave and come back in. Let's try this again. Jester, come here. You may have fooled us with the key the last time, but this time, hopefully we have the right key. Now has not the correct key. We have the key for the other lock, unfortunately. We should maybe go and try this at a different castle. This is another one of those things that is just purely down to your luck in this game. Uh, the jester will either have the right key or they won't. In this case, they don't. So we're going to try this at a different castle. Right, where are we now? This is still the lands of Lord British. I'm not going to steal the princess from Lord British's castle, as Lord British seems like a good guy. Um, so he obviously has reasons for keeping a princess locked up in the dungeon. Uh, we'll go down here to the lands of the dark unknown. Let's see if we can find one of the castles around here. Hopefully the jester will have the right key this time. So where are the hell are the castles? Is this the castle that we want? Uh, this one... This one, the jester is hiding around about the throne room. Um, so I'd, I'd prefer to do this probably in the, the other kind of castle, which is over here. That way we can relatively easily kill the jester and get up to the prison. Oops, I don't want to transact, I want to attack. We have found a key once again. Now we're going to need to get rid of this guard. And this time we do have the right key. The princess is going to follow us out of the castle. We're going to have to take these guards out to get out of this little block. But aside from that, we should be able to just run out, hopefully. Yes, there has saved the princess. She's given her 500 pet points. You're ready for time travel. That goes past really quickly, unfortunately. Um, what she basically says is that the, the, time, uh, the time machine lies in the, in the north east, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll head up. We'll head north anyway. I'm assuming the time machine always lands in the same place, in which case I do know where it is. Um... So we'll head up here. Uh, 
we should be back in the, the lands of Lord British. And we are. Now, before we use the time machine, we need to do one more thing. Since we have no further use at this point for worldly money, I'm going to just pop over to Lord British here and pay him a tribute, which should result in him giving us some hit points. So we're going to offer pence. How much pence dost thou offer? I'm going to... For him 2,500, which will get us hundreds of hit points. It's almost 7,000 hit points now. That is great. That should be more than enough. And with that, we are going to head back up. Now, I hope this is the right way. Okay, perhaps not. Let me just check this here. So we're going to have to find the... The time machine. Unfortunately, the text when you rescue the princess flashes up so quickly that you cannot possibly read it in time. And it doesn't stay up until you press anything. It just disappears after a, about a second. So we are just going to have to work out where the time machine is. Time machine should have appeared... Ah, hello, there is a time machine. Okay. So apparently it's not always in the same place. It must depend what continent you rescue a princess on. But anyway, we have found the time machine. That is all that matters. We can exit our air car. And quickly save the game. We can board the time machine. Entering the craft, thou dost remark upon four holes marked R, G, B, W. The proper gems fit in each hole. Further examination leads thee to two discoveries. There is a button marked launch, and thou art locked in with nothing to do but press it. Well, we shall press it. As soon as thou hast pressed the large black button, lights begin to dance across the control screens. Generators shake the very floor beneath thy feet. The small craft begins to tremble and rattle as thy journey through time begins. After but a few moments, thou dost feel a strong magic pulling thee from thy craft. A moment later, thou art face to face with the evil mundane himself. Good luck, this is it. Okay, and there he is, mundane. So, just in case this hasn't been completely clear, the game doesn't do a great job of explaining the story at this point. Uh, basically, the reason we have time travelled here is because mundane, um, a thousand years in the past, has managed to achieve immortality through the use of that gem that is in front of him there. We have travelled back in time to defeat him before he became immortal and pre prevent the realm from falling into chaos. And that is exactly what we're going to do. So, first things first. That gem that's making you immortal. Not anymore. The gem is gone. That costs us a whole bunch of hit points. But it means we can now kill Mundane. And we have our blaster, so we can, we can hit him from here. Now, Mundane has turned into a bat. He is running away. And this is where this fight gets a little annoying. He will run away as much as he can. And he'll continue running away into the corners where you can't hit him, behind blocks. Yeah, you'll keep moving like that. So yeah, this is this is one of these frustrating battles. Eventually though we will 
hits him enough times that he will be defeated. There, we have done it. Mondain is dead and thou art victorious. So if you, if you, you can fight him before uh, destroying the gem, but if you do that, he doesn't die. He just slumps into a heap on the floor and then he'll get back up after a few turns. Um, so you're better off taking that out first. So, a rain of silver lightning heralds the death of Mondain. Fleeting glimpses of fate's avoided rush. Fates avoided rush through thy mind as thy arcane power of the mage's dying scream echoes in thy ears. A thousand years pass in but a moment's time as a strange sleep overcomes thee. Upon awakening thou dost find thyself in new surroundings. A stately youth in violet robes helps thee to thy feet whereupon thou dost see the thousands who gaze upon thee in adoration. Thy selfless heroism hath saved your people, my worthy one. Should our gratitude alone not be enough to sustain thee, know that I, Lord British, hereby ordain that the entire realm of Susaria be at thy service for all time henceforth. So let it be done. And that is it. Viewers, the game is com complete. There's not even a way to, to exit the game at this point. It literally says press control alt l to restart. So that is where we are going to be ending. Let's play Ultima 1. But that was that was quite enjoyable. I quite like that game. It's a very simple um a very simple RPG by modern terms. But considering its age, I mean that this 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 game is what, 30, 36, 37 years old, something like that, at the time of recording this. It's, that's crazy, um, and it's it's remarkably still pretty fun to play through. Um, it's I'd say very difficult to do if you don't happen to know the way through the, the game. It, it doesn't really explain itself very well at times, um, and quite often it's not great at kind of pointing you towards what you're actually supposed to do next. But um, with a bit of perseverance, you can you can get some hints and tips from the taverns. We tried a few times throughout the play out and unfortunately didn't get very much. But um, if you have a little bit more luck than I did, the the taverns give you a little bit of bits of clues as to what you're supposed to do. And obviously, the kings that you do the quest for will give you some advice um, as you work through as well. So it's it, it kind of points you in the right direction, although it's not entirely obvious at times how to proceed. But there we go. We have we have completed it. Um, Possibly the strangest thing about this game is the way that you you have to basically grind in order to to get your health points and your 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 attributes and that kind of thing up. It's a bit um, a bit different to what we'd expect in a, an RPG these days. But um, yeah, for what it is, it's a it's a fun little game. It's an introduction to the world of Ultima. Um, a lot of this stuff gets somewhat retconned in the, the later Ultima games, but uh, they do reference it in some kind of subtle ways as well, so um, it's an interesting starting point if you are interested in the Ultima series. It's probably a better point, uh, a better starting point to the Ultima series than a Calabeth, um, which some people consider to be Ultima Zero. I wouldn't personally bother with a Calabeth other than maybe having a, a wee quick look at it. Given that it is a free game, a Calabeth, I would check that out maybe just as a point of interest, but I wouldn't spend too much time on it. If you want to really experience the early Ultima games, this is where I would start. Um, it's definitely a, definitely a reasonably playable game. There's plenty of guides online if you are if you do get stuck. Obviously, you can you can watch these videos and these can sort of serve as a bit of a walkthrough as well in terms of how to proceed. But um, yep. Um, at some point, we will no doubt be moving on to Ultima 2, but for now, that was Let's Play Ultima 1, The First Age of Darkness. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed the series. Um, if you have, give us a like, leave us some feedback in the comments, and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content in future. Thank you once again, and I'll catch you next time. See you later!